leadership skills, mental agility, confidence, and commitment to the cause in the young generation. Kanjira model, United Nations, is one of those rare platforms where students learn various language skills. The event is shaped exactly in form of real general assembly of United Nations from a setting to presentation where students from grade 8 to 10 outstandingly perform the role as the delegates of UN member states and discussion on various international affairs and affairs that affects our global. Dear all, now we'd like to welcome our guest, but first of all, on this momentous occasion, it is our proud privilege and fortune to welcome the chief guest of the program, Mr. Tristram Perry. I would like to request Mr. Ranji Thapa and Mr. Samjana Karel to welcome him with Kada and Bukit. Everyone, have a big round of applause, please. Our most esteemed chief guest to kindle the lamp to embark on today's proceedings. Google students are going to present a welcome dance as we proceed today's mega event. <laughs> delegate at a Model UN. I did it many times, but I will always remember the first time I was a delegate. Not sure what I was doing in a suit that didn't fit me and very, very nervous. I would like to encourage you to embrace this experience. For those of you who are experienced delegates, try to find something you have never done before. For those of you who are new delegates, try. I think that Model UN is a fantastic way to learn skills and apply yourself in a way that a traditional classroom does not allow you to do so. First of all, it lets you be someone you are not. You are not trapped in your old personality. You are not trapped with the regular things that come with who you are, but you get to experience life from another perspective. It's like traveling without going anywhere. All of the sudden, you have to make yourself, understand the perspective of another country, of another country, country's people, of another policy. All of you know what it's like to be Nepali, but now you know what it's like to be Argentinian, or German, or Indonesian, or Israeli, or you fill in the blank. And it's a tremendous responsibility. You have not changed from the person that you are, but at the same time you've got to defend things that you don't perhaps understand. And I will draw from my own experience from my first time serving as a delegate for a model United Nations. I happened to get the country Guatemala. And I can probably tell you what I knew at that time about Guatemala on one finger. It was a country I was unfamiliar with, I'd never traveled to, but all of a sudden I had to know everything about it. Oh, and guys, there was no internet. There was no way for me to just Google it because I'm old, 
We didn't have internet. I had to go to the library and go to the encyclopedia. I had to hope that one of the newspapers that our school got had some article about Guatemala. Guess what? They didn't. So you just have to be resourceful and find out more and more stuff. Anyway, the point is, I showed up that first day with my little Guatemalan flag in front of me and as much research as I had possibly done. But that was just the beginning and not the end, as you will find out soon, for those of you who are new delegates. Respected President of General Assembly, all the delegates from different agencies and committees, and everyone present here, a warm and pleasant afternoon to you all. I would like to welcome you all to Kanjirova Mortal United Nations on the behalf of Secretary General. I feel privileged to stand here in front of you all as your Secretary General. I'm heartened to see such a large and enthusiastic group of young adults engaged in such worldwide issues. Together, we all represent Kanjirova Mortal United Nations as it should be. Now, moving on. Starting the General Assembly, I would like to invite the members of the UNHCR to discuss on the resolution. Good afternoon, respected delegates from all the parts of the world. I am representing my country, Qatar, as the chair of the committee, UNHCR. Today, we all are here to discuss on a worldwide topic, protecting the rights of indigenous people. United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR. Sponsors, Nepal, Norway, Panama, and Portugal. Signatories, Philippines, Palau, Mongolia, and Nicaragua. Topic, protecting the rights of indigenous people. Would any delegate from any country in the favor of the resolution would like to make any comment? If so, please raise your straw cards. Thank you, delegates. You all have been recognized. Now, I'd like to give the floor to the delegate of Norway to make supportive comments on the draft resolution paper. Today, I, the delegate of Norway, am here to open on the favor of the draft resolution on the topic protecting the rights of indigenous people by, presented by the delegate of South Korea. The rights of indigenous people have People have over the past three decades become an important component of international law and policy. As a result of movement driven by indigenous people, civil society, international mechanisms and states at the domestic, regional and international levels. Now, I'd like to give the floor to a delegate of Montenegro to make comments opposing the draft resolution paper. Presented by the respected delegate of South Korea on the topic protecting the rights of indigenous people. The reasons we are against the draft resolution includes the following. In my country, there is large indigenous people who are not being provided the proper rights and facilities which they require. According to the census of 2016, the population of Montenegro is 622,000. The unemployment rate of Montenegro is 22.8%. This creates problem for indigenous people. Would any delegate from any country like to ask any question to the speaker? If so, please raise your straw card. Thank you, delegates. You all have been recognized. Now, the delegate of Turkey can raise the question. Respected delegate, you have raised the motion against the topic protecting the rights of indigenous people. You have pointed out the lack of effectiveness of the program launched by UNHCR. Can you describe how can we make the indigenous people feel special, protected, and secure? The international community needs to give special attention to the human rights situation of indigenous people, as shown, as, as shown by the adaptation of international standards and guidelines. Respected delegates, it seems that the majority of the delegates are in the favor of the draft resolution presented by the delegate of South Korea, supported by the delegate of Norway, and opposed by the delegate of Montenegro has been passed by the General Assembly. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the members of this agency. Now, I'd like to call the second committee on the stage. Today, we all are here to discuss on a worldwide concern topic, sustainable tourism for poverty eradication. We would like to give the floor to the respected delegate of Slovenia, 
to present on the draft resolution paper. Economic and Financial Committee. Topic, Sustainable Tourism for Poverty Eradication. Sponsors, Slovenia, Somalia, Australia, and Norway. Signatories, Trinidad and Tobago, Sudan, Haiti, Democratic Republic of Congo. Would any delegate from any country in favor of resolution like to make any comments? If so, you may raise your stroke card. Thank you, delegates. You all have been recognized. I would like to give the floor to the respected delegate of Somalia to make supportive comment on the draft resolution paper. United Nations is trying its best to give the highest priority to poverty eradication through sustainable tourism with its various well-strategized agendas, plans and policies in accordance to Economic and Financial Committee since economic prosperity acts as a backbone for eradicating poverty worldwide. Would any delegates from any country like to oppose the resolution? If so, you may raise a stroke card. Thank you, delegates. You all have been recognized. As the delegate has introduced about the term effective ways, what can be the effective ways that can be utilized by the UN uh, under the topic sustainable tourism for poverty eradication? Thank you, respected delegate. The Economic and Financial Committee has done several efforts, launched several plans and policies for sustainable tourism development. The plans and policies of UN do not become if enough until and unless the respective nations unite with the UN Organization for Sustainable Tourism Development for Poverty Eradication. Those delegates who are in favor of the resolution are requested to raise their stroke card. We are forming this resolution. World Health Organization and United Nations encourages government to work with the United Nations bodies aimed at improving the coordination and effectiveness of use of traditional medicine. 14th April 2007, 18 out of 56 of 31st March 2003, 2nd August 2001, and so on. Would any delegate from any country in favor of the resolution like to make any comment? If so, you may raise your stroke cards. Thank you, delegates. You all have been recognized. Traditional medicines are important components of healthcare for a large proportion of the global population. It is a category that covers a wide range of medical traditions in low, middle, and high-income countries. It is used by about 60% of the world population. In comparison to modern medicine, traditional medicine is perceived to be more affordable and easily available in low-income countries. As the delegate of Cambodia claimed that traditional medicines are more effective than modern medicines, and traditional medicines shows no side effects on the body in terms of health status, but can the respected delegate clarify the claim to be much more justifiable? Based on the experience with the use of traditional medicines, my country claims traditional medicine to be more useful than the modern medicines. Thank you. I am the chair of UNESCO, a governing body. Today, we all are here to discuss on a worldwide topic, impact of climate change on World Heritage Sites. On the behalf of the committee, we would like to give the floor to the respected delegate of Canada to present the draft resolution paper. The General Assembly, we are forming the resolution 42 of 186 and 42 of 187 of 11th December 1987 on the environmental perspective to the year 2000 and beyond, and on the report of the World Commission on Environment and Development, respectively. Noting the past efforts of UNESCO and its member countries, as well as other national and international organizations. Today, I, the delegate of Denmark, am here to opine on the favor of the draft resolution presented by the respected delegate of Canada. We know how much important heritage sites have been from the time of our ancestors to this new generation. These heritage sites help to attract tourists and help the country to develop economically. This has been an important infrastructure of development. Knowing this, heritage sites help a country to develop and run smoothly. UNESCO is organizing different programs and renovating them.
Good afternoon, respected delegates from all the corners of the world. I am the chair of ECOSOC. Today, we all are here to discuss on a worldwide topic, involvement of youth and women in the government. The United Nations Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC, is one of the six principal organs of United Nations, which is responsible for coordinating the economic social and related work of 15 UN specialized agencies. On the behalf of the committee, we would like to give the floor to the delegate of Laos to present on the draft resolution paper. United Nations Economic and Social Council. Signatories, Japan, Jordan, Mali, and Malaysia. Sponsors, Australia, Italy, and United States. Topic the involvement of youth and women in the government. The General Assembly, reminding of the fact that 7.6 billion is the world's population. A majority of them are women and youth who don't get the opportunity to be involved in the government. Now I would like to give the floor to the respected delegate of Malaysia to make supportive comment on the draft. Young people and women are often excluded or overlooked as a political candidate. Politics is typically regarded as a space for politically experienced men. Only 22.8% of all national parliamentarians were women as of June 2016. A slow increase from 11.3% in 1995 as of, June, as of October 2017, 11 women are serving as head of state and 12 are serving as head of government. Rwanda had the highest number of women parliamentarians worldwide. Globally, there are 38 states in which women account for less than 10% of parliamentarians. We, Malaysia stands by the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. It aims to achieve high income status by 2020 but cannot do this without youth and women being equal partners and drivers of growth and prosperity for all citizens. Saudi Arabia, the women are still deprived of their basic rights. So what can be done to raise their voice in these states? It can be uplifted with continuous effort of everyone. So the same measures like raising awareness, women education, participation of women in different activities ranging from politics to every other activities. Now I would like to give the floor to the respected delegate of Nepal to make comment opposing the draft resolution. I, the delegate of Nepal, would like to speak few words opposing the draft resolution presented by the respected delegate of Afghanistan on the topic combating terrorism. On 11 September 2001, a terror attack was made in USA. It has been 16 years, but the threat in the heart of people is still kept alive by a series of attacks in Afghanistan, India, Pakistan, Nigeria, Cameroon, Israel, and if I go on with the names, I probably won't stop. If we want to know about the real destruction that took place in such attacks, we need to talk to the people who have lost their loved ones forever. Many parents became childless, whereas many children became orphans. And if we think that our condolence will restore their happiness, then we are absolutely wrong. Delegate of Nepal, as you mentioned that all countries are not being affected by terrorism, but these some countries are being targeted again and again. Can you explain its causes and what kind of resolution do you expect to introduce this resolution, uh, this issue more effectively? To eradicate terrorism, we, we, we must work on such root causes of terrorism. Moreover, there are so many dictators which are funding such kind of terrorist groups. So it's our responsibility to identify them. Thank you, respected delegates. You all have been recognized. Now, those delegates who are against the resolution are requested to raise their stroke cards. Thank you, respected delegates. You all have been recognized. Excuse me, delegates. As a delegate of China, the permanent member of Security Council has raised his stock card. Let me give the floor to him. As China is one of the permanent members of the UN Security Council, I, the delegate of China, would like to veto the draft resolution presented by the respected delegate of Afghanistan in the topic combating terrorism. To the General Assembly, the existing Secretary General is to hand over her post to the upcoming Secretary General.
respected former Secretary General, and all the delegates from different countries present here in the General Assembly. First of all, I express my sincere gratitude and thanks to the General Assembly and the Security Council for entrusting me with the position of the Secretary General of the United Nations. I wish to extend my deep respect and appreciation to all the member states and all the leaders for their strong support. Now, after the successions of the resolutions, drafts presented by different committees and agencies, I would like to call the President of the United Nations for General Assembly concluding remarks. We heard about people running from gunshots or the force of exploding bombs. People forced to make the decision between risking their lives to stay or risking their lives to flee. People who are beginning to lose or have already lost hopes in international peace processes. People still waiting for justice and human rights to become a part of their daily reality. The use of traditional medicines in this 21st century and the implementation of sustainable tourism for poverty eradication. Your opinions didn't just focus on challenges, they spoke of solutions as well. We heard the accounts of strength, resilience, and entrepreneurial spirit. And I thank you all for placing the people at the center of this general debate. I'd like to call upon one of the important guests of today's program, Mr. Ram Babu Shah. Dear all, let's welcome him onto the stage for his impression of the program. Assalamu alaikum, bonjour, and uh, nihao. It is a pleasure for the UN to greet this model United Nations. And all of you are our delegates. All of you are our partners in the development of the world and in the restoration of peace in the world. At Model UN, you broaden your horizons on global scale. And each one of you who have participated here, I heard you very loud and clear the thrust that you put into the subject matter that you raised and the deliberations with all the consequences and with all uh, your uh, counter challenges and your supports to all the arguments that you raised are really interesting. This is what the United Nations really appreciate for. It has been a wonderful session, wonderful Kanjirova model United Nations. I would like to congratulate all the school community, particularly student delegates who delivered the speech, who were engaged in research and findings for the last couple of months. You have done a wonderful job, so you need a big hands, everybody.